Frank Skumans. Let's go. So Franks is going to be able to put a lot more pressure than the Koomans, uh, at least in the early game. Obviously, Koomans, they do have the cheaper stable, but Franks berry bonus and then have it <clears throat> having the extra HP really helps a lot. So as the Franks player, you want to be thinking about going aggressive, um, at least just playing, playing some scouts here. Uh, it doesn't have to be too crazy, but of course, against Koomans, you either have to damage them in in feudal age or you need to go kind of all in against them in castle age otherwise their economy gets so far ahead so you sort of have just two options here now this map is super open opponents gold and berries are mm, not too awkward if you walls this side but the gold's a little awkward you know tower could come up here or something but he has this back gold so maybe not the greatest so this is the kind of map where you go scouts you see if you can get some damage done. And then maybe you go up to Castle Age and you go full all-in like Knights with Siege forward or something like that. Otherwise, the opponent's going to get really far ahead. Um, but I think there are many ways to play it. That's how I would do it. But, you know, another high-level player might actually uh, have a different approach. So it kind of depends on what you're what you're good at, what you're comfortable with doing. And, uh, yeah, so here we're going to speed through just a little bit here. Just slightly because uh, well, we're taking a look at the Dark Age here. A little bit of idle TC, but it happens. And how's the scouting? We're going to keep it on your scouting for, from now. Just going to be pushing some deer. All right. One deer, it doesn't really cost you too much. Houses next to the wood. I mean, you could have walled towards this house. So it would have been fine. So as I, I'm always saying, like, why are we walling towards here? We don't need the stone. We don't need this hill. Might as well just wall, like, towards the TC, right? Just wall to here. And then, I mean, if you need to, you wall to here. Uh, or like to this wood line, which we haven't scouted yet. Um, but no, no sense in walling out this way because it you don't need this space. So thinking about that a little bit more is pretty good. Because well, of course, against Cummins, like if you're gonna go aggressive, you need to have minimal walls anyways. So just whatever walls need you need to prevent the opponent from just like killing you. But um, yeah, you wanna try not to wall too early. And did we get loom early? That's uh. I mean, it's, I think I calculated it the other day, it was like something like 30, 30 wood loss by getting loom this early, or it was like 30 or 40 wood loss or so, just by getting loom now instead of at the end of Feudal Age. So, you know, it, it's something. It's not nothing, that's for sure. Uh, so this looks like men-at-arms. Uh, yeah, Franks can do a perfectly fine men-at-arms rush. That's completely fine, but the thing is, is that, like, if you're going men-at-arms instead of scouts... It's kind of nice to have the stable up so that it makes your night transition a, a bit better. That was emergency loom. Yeah. Well, you had the houses though, right? I don't think you needed it. I don't know. Maybe. Um, this, this isn't making too much sense here. We got the barracks, but we're not going to use it. So you didn't need the barracks yet, right? So I guess you're still going to go scouts, but... This second lumber camp could have gone down before the barracks. You can get the barracks started at at 60% up to feudal age, and it will come in at the perfect timing. So feudal age takes 130 seconds to research. So 60% of 130 is the amount of time that it takes for the barracks to come up. So whatever that is. Uh, so yeah, it's a good time to get it at. These walls are these walls make more sense although i do prefer to make them kind of at the far end of the wood line gives you a bit more space especially because of over chopping right so you, it's nice to link it up here instead of instead of on this end of the lumber you want to have it kind of on this end and then wall to the barracks so there we go and yeah you'll be able to get the uh stable up no problemo um as franks i mean at a high level we would usually want to be up on like 19 here so we're about two bills late but might still be okay. Uh, well, the thing is, is that he is going to get his TC up here. So, you know that the TC is here. So, honestly, I don't know. You won't be able to kill one and you're just going to lose HP. You don't want to waste scout HP. Although this, he, he overreacted there pretty hard. He should have just sent two bills. Yeah, he's actually overreacting to this. So, it's actually working. But he should just send like two bills. Yeah, yeah, like that. Exactly. And he brings a scout. So, uh, I, you actually did damage there. That shouldn't have done anything. But, honestly, you got some, some value. So, the opponent reacted wrong. Um, okay, these bills, I think we're idle there for a while during all that, though. Yeah, look at that. You know, while, while you're microing, we got idles for... 7, 10, 
20 seconds. Uh, that's like one minute of vital time, which is, that's like 30 wood, rough, roughly, right? Uh, double bid axe, villagers, collect resources at 28.2 wood per minute. So yeah, I mean, it's close to 30 wood. Um, so it all adds up, these little things, right? And every time that you do one thing, that means that you're not doing something else. So in this situation, we need to be adding farms. So you have too many on wood. And part of that stems from not having the rally set to straggler. On Feudal Age, this is a big tip. Remember this. On Feudal Age, keep the rally set to straggler trees because you're going to be adding farms. So what you want to do is you want to be adding farms every bill that comes out should be adding a farm here but since there's the wood line it's kind of awkward you have to send them all the way back right so four on one camp five on the other camp and then straggler tree bills and then you just and then you chop the stragglers and you can delete them with the farms too it's like kind of hard to make farms when there's stragglers everywhere too uh you don't want to overcommit. you kind of overcommitted to scouts as well your opponent's on two tcs scouts they can run around but they can't really do too much here other than hopefully kill villagers that he hasn't walled in and and force some just like getting scouting and and forcing him to be late to gold or something if he didn't have this on gold i don't know like you can sometimes do some damage but you didn't need five scouts to do that like three scouts would have been fine and then you can go up faster to castle age and make knights so a little over investment into military basically from this point you just need to you need to have solid macro so you need to get up to castle age but unfortunately the farms came down really late so you're going to be late to castle age and that's kind of what the problems are going to be stemming from is not spending the wood in early feudal age to get enough farms so that you can go to castle age on time so we're constantly floating a ton of wood and that's the the most important thing that you have to be doing at this stage of the game is adding farms with the with the wood income um you're kind of lucky here you will get some damage but of course he's on two tcs he doesn't mind losing a few bills here looks like he's only gonna lose one as well uh, oh. Oh, oh, oh i didn't even realize she was still there okay he's gonna lose two so that's that's damage but you're still behind nice all right here we go we upgrading scouts and idling farmers eh, maybe on this elo but it shouldn't work the opponent will just be up to castle age and make like one night so mm, maybe but or he can just make some spears and then be up faster it's not really a, a standard play that's gonna work usually <laughs> a little bit housed here but i think your main issue the main takeaway in this game has to be adding a farm every 60 wood in feudal age for the most part of feudal age and also setting the rally point from your tc once you click up to feudal age set the rally point from your tc to a straggler tree um basically until you have your 15 plus farms in feudal age which is what you're at now now you can set the rally point like to gold or wood or whatever um usually i'd have it on gold for a while and yeah it needs to be on straggler tree so you're gonna be able to go up here oh picking off another villain on the on the farm that's good i would say going box formation when you have six or less units makes them a lot easier to micro as well in a line formation it's just not very not very nice how they move when you have six or less units but box formation keeps them really nice and tight which is very good okay so you are gonna be up a little late to gold though unfortunately but you do have the market so you just sell sell 200 wood and then go up that'd be beautiful let's see what you do selling okay you generally don't want to sell the food even if you have lots of food here it's like you just sell the wood it's it's just kind of better the food is a lot more valuable even though you get the same price Food at this stage of the game is a lot more valuable because you need wood to make the farm and then you need to farm the farm the food so it's it actually costs you more villager work time to uh to generate food than it does for gold and also wood comes in faster than food by a long shot as well so it's actually food is just more valuable even though the market exchange rate doesn't really doesn't really uh tell you that um okay always get starved of wood ah uh, well you probably have auto reseed no you don't have auto reseed okay i don't know why you should have um should have tons oh did, wait did you force drop these these bills how, how did you do that oh yeah nice okay oh uh you, you missed a step here though so right here see how you have to like send them again 
what you should do when you're force dropping, just like in general, you right click the camp and then you shift Q to the gold. And then they, when they drop, they just automatically go to the gold. But for here, you had to right click and then you had to wait until they drop and then you have to right, or, or and then you have to right click here. So if you shift Q, they will individually just once they drop, they'll individually go. So you don't have to wait. It's a lot more accurate to do it that way. So that's what you want to do um, just whenever you're force dropping. So even on the gold, select the gold miners, right click the mining camp, and then shift Q back to the gold. They'll, they'll drop and then they'll go back. So it's really good. You have amazing English pronunciation. I really like it. Thank you very much. I am from Western Canada and I hear that we have the most easy to understand accent. Uh, okay, so where is our second stable? That is the question. I like that you're going for the siege push here, though. This is good. It's what you need to do against the humans, but you do need to have a second stable. Oh, it's too late. And it's also in the back of your base. It needed to be here. You just get these farmers. I know you, you hate touching the farmers, but, you know, you get the two farmers to build it here. It comes up a bit faster, but it needed to be up already. Okay, instant knights, maybe? Hello? Instant knights instant knights as soon as we're in the next age we need to actually make the stuff that we're we're doing in the next age so instant knights very important here that's basically one production cycle you could have had one night so you don't play franks franks use a yeah franks use a lot less wood okay we're still not making knights so that's like I mean, you should have four knights on the field right now because you should have had the two stables up. Now now we're using them, but it's kind of... You're going to miss the timing maybe a little bit. Oh, you're in, though. Mangonel's in the queue. Okay. It's looking okay here. But the opponent's so far ahead in, in terms of vil count. You can fight pikes with the knights as long as you get enough. But, of course, you, you're kind of minus four knights by just not building them at this stage. Yeah, you don't want to spend too much time microing this. Like, the macro behind this is uh, important, aka not not just unit control. The the unit control here is not important, but the the producing from the stables, getting the units in position. Like the knights should be rallied up here, getting the mangonels to work. Much more important than using these scouts. These scouts they're w kind of wasting your time, actually. So, yeah, Mangonel should be down here shelling these uh, vills on wood. Would be perfect. Nice, we're getting everything together now. Luckily, the opponent didn't have anything out on the map here to, to kill your stuff. Oh, Mangonel's got to go, though. We're kind of wasting a lot of time here. Uh, you have a very limited window to actually attack, so you really need to attack. Yeah, you don't need to wait, though. You just go with the first one. You want to put the pressure as soon as possible. You'll pretty much, you're pretty much guaranteed to get one villager kill when you surprise, because you, you one-shot them. Waiting for the second one just means that he's chopping this entire time. But if you shoot him earlier, then he has to idle all these vills. Then he's losing a lot more. If you wait for two, it, it doesn't do double the damage. It does actually just less damage. There you go. Like, yeah, you get two kills, but, I mean, it's like... He now has m enough wood to do what he wants to do, probably. Most likely. Okay. And, well, yeah, he's almost 20 bills up. So, your timing was kind of like a minute ago, but let's see. Plus two armor would be really good before going in. This is where you click plus two armor, because you know you're going to get uh, in. You just need to attack the wall. Plus two armor, and then you can run under the TC. Going on here. I don't really know what your knights are doing. Oh, it's, he's still open in the top. The one thing when you're sieging, you, you almost want to keep your units next to the siege so he doesn't just kill them. Or at least like around where the siege is. But we stop knight production. We stop knight production, we stop mangonel production. So that's that's really the key here. If we uh, turned all of these resources into knights. Instead of 10 knights, we have like 20 knights. And then with 20 knights, we just win because it's just everything dies. Um, so this kind of push is really hard to make work. And, and I mean, this is like 1k level, so it's hard to, really hard to make work at this level. Also, we did add an unnes unnecessary TC, but it's like you're floating so many resources anyways, it, it doesn't really matter too much. But the key here, 
keeping the production working. So we have 0% work time on all of these in the last minute. So they haven't been used in a minute. Um, the micro is not as important. Basically, like... 10 nights with good micro is not going to be as good as 20 nights with no micro. 20 nights with ni no micro will always be 10 nights with micro. So it's just better to... It's better to just make those 20 nights instead of just make 10 nights and try and micro them. Of course, high level players make 20 nights and micro them. So, But, uh, you know, you're not quite at that level yet. So, But, uh, yeah. You will kill his pikes, though. So that's pretty okay. But, yeah, you need the production. If you had just 10 more knights, then you can run around. But at this point, you only barely winning the fight is not what you want. Because your opponent's so far ahead economically. Um, and yeah, of course, not protecting the siege means that uh, these scouts probably will get these done. Oh, he's out of stone, though. Or out of wood, sorry. With just a third mangonel, you would have taken that TC, and then it would have been in a really it would have been a really good good spot but yeah it was just unit unit production here unit production was the the main issue um so at this point it's like your opponent's super far ahead economically he has counter units and you don't have military mass so you don't really have too much of an advantage actually i don't think you have any advantage here other than position on the map um, so getting plus two armor. At this stage, you're not running under the TC, so it's not important. If you're fighting pikes, you want to have attack anyways. Because killing the pikes faster is going to make them do a lot less damage to you. If you can kill them in just one hit faster, then you will take a lot less damage. So armor actually doesn't really matter. But unit numbers is better. Instead of having plus two armor, I'd rather have seven knights than four knights, basically. Um, so we're relying on selling the wood. But, uh, yeah. Okay. Might as well get a TC here. Makes sense. You need to secure the gold. And you still have this position, so it's okay. We're going to speed it up a little bit here. At this point, push was dead, so sad. Uh, castle drop. Yeah, yeah. Castle drop and go up. It's fine. Scorpions, all right. Seems good. You're still putting pressure, though. At this level, like, players really cave under pressure. So, this is okay. You might be able to get the this thing, too. You see he's on um, pike tech, too. So, that's kind of good. That he's staying on pike deck. Nice. I mean, you know how to you know how to get bills. You know how to get bills. That's for sure. It's good. Scorpions. Oh no! One of them died to the mangonel. Castle drop is good. Um, you don't really have the farms to to go up to imp though. If you're on 30 farms right now, I would say yeah, imp is great. But if you're not on 30 farms, it's like kind of kind of hard to make work. Oh, he only got one. Okay, that's good. He repaired his CC to full. That was really expensive. TCs take a lot of resources to repair. They, they're a special building that takes actually um, like four times the usual amount to repair. Ooh, light cav. All the siege gonna die. But those light cav were not for free. So it's probably okay. Archer upgrade. Oh yeah, why do we... Uh, that must have been a misclick. We're not making archers. That was probably just a misclick in the blacksmith or whatever. Um, okay, we need to be making constant villagers. Opponents just super over queued, which is better than under queuing, that's for sure. Um, you do have enough to place a juicy castle right on the gold here. That would be beautiful. You're thinking the same thing. Ooh, it doesn't range the, the TC though. And ah, he has the pikes out though. Yeah, that's not gonna work. Abort. You know what's good against pikes, though, is throwing axemen. You could get a castle here to start, yeah, and then you make a few axemen. And that could be good. Two knights. Oh, you can just chase those. Just chase them with, like, two. You don't need to send your whole army. Okay, so imagine... Imagine if your, your army went over here. And killed these. Because you know his pikemen are, like, chilling over here. You go this way, and you go in here, you go in here, you go in here, and he dies. So he's kind of just distracting you here. So you, you want to just send what you need to, to fight this. If it's two knights, you send two knights. Kind of. You can send three knights. Usually three knights is better. But uh, yeah, actually that's that's what you're doing. So actually, well played. Of course, he got his not, he's got his pikes in position. But yeah, you can fight these pikes, actually. You have enough here. You shouldn't have been scared of, of these pikes. He has like eight guys. Your guys still beat him one-on-one. -on -one. You just kill... 
Man, just kill his bikes. You don't need to. You basically just wasted a bunch of time bringing them back here. But if you killed all of his units here, then you kill all the bills. So it wouldn't have been cost effective, but it would have been uh, better because you would have killed bills, which would have been super good. All right. So going up to Imp. Nice. Castle probably still should have been like one tile more forward or two tiles more forward. Would have been better. And he's gonna get in here, but well, a few knights will clean that up. And actually, you saw it, so you were able to get away. Oh my god, that was so loud! Why is the bell so loud? Oh my god, like, why is it so loud? Actually, it's only the bell that's loud. All right, well, whatever. All of the other sounds are are down. And yeah, obviously, don't don't use the bell. Because it's just bad, but uh, it's also way too loud. Uh, wait. Okay, yeah. I'm on the wrong point of view. That's why I didn't have vision there. Okay, and now we make trebs. Beautiful. Three treb production. That, yeah, you're doing exactly what you need to do here. Except for Pikeman's probably not useful here for now. But I guess if he's going light cap, it's fine. But you could definitely just go cavalier. Chase his light cap with cavalier, it's fine. Ooh, but we didn't have the units. Where are our pikemen? Oh, dang. Really well played by Red to go and dive that right here. Yeah, you needed your units forward. You always have to protect your units. Dang. Well, without if you had ballistics, you probably would have killed a lot more guys. I think that your castles kept just missing everything. And that was a pretty big loss there. So at this stage, you don't really have any units. You're going pikemen, but he already has pikemen to counter your pikemen. So what you need... It's just like Axeman or Cavalier. Probably Axeman is the perfect play here. You just go full Axeman from here, and then you kill everything. You need to get a lot of them. Axemen are pretty bad in low numbers. They're only good in big numbers. But once you get like 40 of them, they kill everything. But we're kind of... Kind of donating some units here. Although... Quite have enough. Kind of? Yeah, GG. Just not quite enough uh, units. So that was your problem in Castle Age as well, is not making enough units. So in the late game as well. But yeah, you also didn't finish your boom. So keeping the TCs running a little bit later in the stages, later stages of the game. But yeah, in general, just keeping the production running. If you're going to go for a forward siege, the reason why your forward siege didn't work is because you didn't make enough units. You had the resource product, or like you had the resource income. You just didn't use the stable. So I don't know if you're using the select all stable hotkey, but... You definitely want to get used to that. I bound mine to G for stables, so it's a good hot key to use. And uh, okay, nice, nice. So yeah, just remembering to keep keep unit production. And yeah, this seed, this push w was good. It was um, it should have been a little bit faster with the unit production, but other than that, like it could have worked. But it was just keeping the stables running that we were lacking here.